स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Good morning everyone. So in today's lecture I am going to talk about the numerical solutions of Euler Lagrange equation. So so far we have uh, discussed about the various forms of Euler Lagrange equation. and also we have found the solution to the euler lagrange equation purely using analytical techniques so in today's lecture i am going to talk about what happens when we are stuck in a situation when the euler lagrange equations are no longer solvable analytically so in that case we have the help of numerics and i am going to discuss three different methods today in this lecture on how to solve and uh, later on in this the course of this lecture i am also going to provide some other references for people interested in developing higher order numerics so the first method that we will talk about in this class today is regarding the eulers <coughs> finite difference method so this seems to be the simplest method that we can uh, adopt in finding the solution of the euler lagrange equations numerically right let me let me uh, abbreviate this method by efdm okay so the basic idea of this method is as follows <coughs> the idea is we are going to approximate we are going to approximate our function or the function which in involved in this functional uh, 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 in this functional optimization is the integrand right so the integrand is what we are uh, we have to approximate so we approximate the integrand uh, integrand and hence the integral into into finite grids grid points right so instead of now uh solving the, the uh, finding the optimum value uh, the optimum function of an integral we are now going to find the optimum value of a summation so the integral in the functional changes to a summation over the particular set of grid points so then uh, the next set of idea is we are then the moment we uh, we discretize our functional the the integral into finite set of points our integral becomes a summation and then the problem reduces to the standard optimization problem the problem reduces to the standard optimization uh, optimization case in multivariate calculus so the way we approach uh, you know maximizing or minimizing a function in a regular vector space uh, that is the same way that we adopt in this uh, strategy and finally the way to do it is after we have discretized our functional all we have to do is to find the optimal solution by setting the derivatives equal to 0 the derivatives with respect to the unknowns equal to 0 <clears throat> so these three points reflect the basic idea of the numerical solution now let me just uh, let me just build a little bit more background before i am going to highlight this methodology using some examples so then let me just say that let me just say that uh, we have a finite set of points so the way we numerically approximate our problem is that we use finite set of mesh points so use 
use mesh points use mesh points from x0 x0 is less than x1 is less than x2 and so on and the final set of mesh point is xn this x0 could be the left hand side of the boundary and the xn could be the right hand side of the boundary so our integral is from a to b and we approximate we approximate our derivative we approximate our derivative y prime at grid points x i by delta y i by delta x i right which is also equal to uh, y i plus 1 minus y i divided by delta x i or x i minus 1 plus 1 minus x i. So, that is the Euler's forward difference approximation that we are using to approximate the derivatives at the, the points of our choice. And finally, <coughs> finally the, the third rule involves we use the standard rectangle rectangle rule to change our integral into summation. So, use rectangle rule to change our integral f of y which is integral from a to b of the function f of x y y prime dx and we change it using into a summation which is as follows. So, i so i from 0 to n well well let me let me write this in in the other page. So, the integral changes to a summation i from 0 to n right well it will be from n from 0 to n minus 1 because our function involves a quantity like y i plus 1. So, the summation involves i from 0 to n minus 1 f of x i y i and uh, derivative of y at x i right or I, let me say that this is approximated as delta y i delta x i right and then notice that we had we had an an element d x. So, d x changes to d x changes changes to delta x i right. So, this is our the function that now we have to maximize or minimize notice now the functional has changed into function or let me call this as the vector function which is a function of the unknowns y bar right or this is also equal to the function y 0 y 1 to y n right. Okay. So, now we are going to treat the idea is to treat this treat the maximization of this function using the standard multivariate calculus. So, treat so hold well just a moment. So, uh, before we do that let us notice that this particular function has n plus 1 arguments right. So, n plus 1 arguments however, we have two arguments corresponding to the boundary condition. So, y 0 and y n are the values of y at x 0 and x n given by the corresponding boundary condition. So, there are n plus 1 unknown. So, we treat we treat this function this as a standard maximization or minimization problem minimization of a function of n minus 1 variables right. The two of the variables are just the boundary conditions the remaining are the n minus 1 variables right and we we find the solution to this problem by taking the derivative of f with respect to the unknowns well f has multiple variables. So, let me call this as a partial. So, we take the partial of f with respect to y i uh, from and set it equal to 0 where i is from 1 to n minus 1 right. So, this is this is the set of equations that we solve to find the necessary or to find the extremum of this function 
okay and further let us assume let us assume that the grids are uniform assume uniform grid right now we are going to make this assumption so as to simplify our calculations so assume uniform grid such that my delta xi is final point minus initial point divided by n which is the number of grid points okay i call this as delta x so so let us so so all that is required in this method is to just find the the maximum of this function using the standard first derivative test so let us look at an example okay so the example says let's go to the next slide so the example says that we need to find the extremal so extremize uh, f of y which is given by the integral from 0 to 1 half y prime square plus y square by 2 minus y dx so we need to extremize uh, subject to subject to the boundary condition y of 0 is 0 and y of 1 is also 0 right so my my domain is x from 0 to 1 so well before i move ahead and solve this uh, function functional find the extremum of this functional using the euler's finer difference method let us see what is the exact solution given by the euler lagrange method right so note so note that if we were to find the euler lagrange equations we are going to end up with the following ode so the extremum is uh, the extremum y is given by the euler lagrange equation which reduces to this following ode so students should check that by plugging by solving the euler lagrange you we eventually get this following ode okay so then the ode has it's a constant coefficient ode which is non homogeneous the homogeneous solution the homogeneous solution to the ode will be the solution to this equation which means that we get that y homogeneous is a e to the power e to the power x plus b e to the power minus x right and the particular solution the particular solution is given by y particular is equal to 1 we can plug and see that y particular equal to 1 satisfies the ode so finally the the solution y of x is y homogeneous plus y particular and the solution comes out to be a e to the power x plus b e to the power minus x plus 1 okay so we have two unknowns a and b and they can be found using these two boundary conditions and let me just write down the final answer after finding the constants i see that y is the following constants e to the power minus 1 by e minus e to the power minus 1 times e to the power x plus 1 minus this quantity e to the power minus x plus 1 okay the students should check that this indeed satisfies the boundary condition as well as well both the boundary conditions okay so 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 we already know the exact the exact solution to this problem so now we are going to discretize our problem uh, our functional and see that the euler lagrange method all is uh, is well approximated by the euler's finite difference method or not okay so let us look at what happens when we use the finite difference method right so what happens is well let us as uh, shown in the previous slide let us take a uniform grid so use so we take xi to be i by n right so i take i from 
1 up to n minus 1. So, we take i to be these are my following grid points. So, start uh, well. So, i from 0 1 to uh, n n ok. So, then uh, so, so these are my grid points. Then we also take my boundary points y 0 and y n they are both 0 due to the boundary conditions given by this problem. And then we see that our uniform grid delta x is just 1 by n the domain size the domain length is 1. So, then uh, further we can describe we can describe delta y i. So, delta y i is y i plus 1 minus y i and delta and y i prime which is the derivative of y at the point x i is delta y i divided by delta x and delta x is 1 by n. So, this reduces to n times y i plus 1 minus y i right and so what we have is y i prime square we need all these expressions in our problem will be y i prime whole square. So, we just plug in the expression here we get that this is equal to n square times y i plus 1 square minus 2 y i y i plus 1 plus y i square. So, we are ready to substitute all these values in our original functional. So, so, the Euler's finite difference method reduces to the following function. We see that my vector function is as follows. This is also equal to the summation i from 0 to n minus 1 of f of x i y i y i prime uh, delta x. It is a uniform grid and we see that this is also equal to plugging in all the values inside this integrand. Uh, from the problem, we see that this is also equal to i from 0 to n minus 1 uh, n square by 2 y i plus 1 square minus 2 y i y i plus 1 plus y i plus 1 well y i square right and then the rest of the terms are plus y i square by 2 minus y i times delta x. Okay. So, then this becomes, so delta x is nothing but 1 over n. So, then I can simplify this expression a little bit more. This is summation of n by 2 i from 0 to n minus 1 times this quantity inside the bracket plus y i square by 2 minus y i divided by n. So, now we have a function a vector function of n variables uh, y, y 0 well n minus 1 variable y 1 to y n y n minus 1 right. So, what we can do is uh, we can further include the two unknowns uh, coming from the boundary that is y 0 and y n and set up the function the total function in the form of uh, you know uh, in in another form. So, so we include so what I just said is the following. So, we are going to include we are going to include the end points the end point condition mainly the end points are y 0 and y n they are already 0 we know that and we use them as we include them as a Lagrange condition. So, so include the endpoint condition using Lagrange multiplier. So, students who have done standard multivariate calculus should be aware of the Lagrange multiplier method. If they are not, we are going to do a very brief revision very soon. So, using the Lagrange multiplier method, we write down the new vector function. So, my new vector function now is the original function f bar of y bar 
which is i from 0 to n minus 1 uh, n by 2 times y i plus 1 square minus 2 y i y i plus 1 plus y i square right plus y i uh, y i square by 2 minus y i divided by n times well plus the additional conditions that we have included are y 0 and y n and we have included those using these additional con constants known as the Lagrange multiplier. Okay, so, the next step involves the next step to the solution involves we take the derivative of this vector function with respect to the unknowns and set them equal to 0. Right now, since we have included even y 0 and y n, we assume that they are unknown, but later on we are going to use the boundary condition to eliminate them. So, if we were to use the fact if we were to assume that y 0 and y n are unknown, we now have n plus 1 unknowns. Well, in fact, n plus 3 unknowns including lambda 0 and lambda n. Right? So, we set up our first derivatives. So, my, my first derivatives are as follows. Notice that when i is 0, we will have the following expressions for different values of i. So, this derivative is for i equal to 0, we get that this is also equal to the following. So, here I have straight away used uh, uh, in the expression of capital F, we have used the information coming from the boundary. And for i equal to 1 to n minus 1, that is all the interior points, the expression reduces to the following n times 2 uh, 2 y i minus y i plus 1 minus y i minus 1 plus y i minus 1 by n. And finally, when i is equal to n, the other boundary point, we see that the expression reduces to n times y n minus y n plus 1. Well, there is no n plus 1 involved. So, n minus 1 plus plus lambda n. Okay. So, then as I just said, we have n plus 3 variables. We have n plus 3 variables and those variables are from y 0 to y n and the constants lambda 0 and lambda 1, lambda n. right? And we have n plus 3 unknowns n plus 3 equations, we can see that here we have n minus 1 and we have, so these, these give me n plus 1 equations and we also have, uh, so let me call this as, uh, as the setup as star. So, we have star is giving us n plus 1 equations plus the fact that y 0 is 0 and y n is 0 coming from the boundary gives us the additional two equations to solve. So, the system is fully solvable, the number of unknowns are equal to the number of equations and we will we should get a unique solution. Okay. So, then all I have to do is to set up the linear system, we set up the linear system, the linear system A x is equal to b and we solve for the system that gives us the unknowns y i's and those y i's we are the approximate solution to the extremal and that is the end of the solution methodology. But just to uh, just to highlight how this solution compares with our exact solution, uh, we have done I have done some numerical simulations and uh, and I would like to compare how does it matches with the exact solution. So, in this case, so this is our example 1. So, if we were to plot the exact solution, the exact solution was shown in our previous slide. The exact solution looks like this and if we take only 4 grid points, only 4 grid points, we see that 3 of them will be interior, 
there will be two which are on the boundary and we get a very jagged type of an approximate solution right so the approximate solution satisfies the exact the value of the exact functional function uh, only at five different points including two at the boundary however however if we do the same exercise comparing with the exact solution with let's say higher number of grid points let's say n equal to 20 we see that the solution is much more smooth and closer to the exact solution right so that has all been uh, that is just what i am showing uh, what we have got through the numerical output okay so so the moral of the story here is the finer the grid point the closer is the euler's finite difference solution to the exact solution right in fact we will show now next that the euler solution converges to the solution given by the euler lagrange equation in the limit delta x goes to 0 or in the limit that the number of grid points approaches infinity okay so so what we are showing is the convergence of the euler's finite difference method okay so let me just again state our function our vector function is as follows summation i from 0 to n minus 1 of f of xi yi delta yi by delta xi right times delta x now we want to differentiate the euler method differentiates this vector function with respect to yi notice that yi appears in this argument and also yi appears in this argument because my delta yi is yi plus 1 minus yi and also it appears in delta yi minus 1 because that is delta yi minus yi minus 1 right so yi appears if you want to differentiate with respect to the variable yi for this function it appears in three places one in the second argument and twice in the third argument as follows right so if we were to differentiate so the euler's finite difference method says that we differentiate this vector function with respect to the variable yi and set it equal to 0 right and now when we differentiate this function we see that this is also equal to the derivative of f at yi that is the second argument here so let me so this is evaluated at xi yi delta yi by delta xi right and plus a uh, plus well i have what i have done is i have scaled out this constant delta x so delta x will not appear in any of our terms on the right hand side so then the other two terms are uh, well so delta xi this is nothing but delta x so i get two more terms one by delta x times the derivative of this quantity with respect to yi that is also equal to del f del yi times of the argument xi minus 1 yi minus 1 comma delta yi minus 1 by delta x or delta xi minus 1 which is delta x right and minus because yi appears here with a minus so minus 1 by delta x del f del y i of x i y i comma delta y i by delta x right we see that this is also equal to so let me just uh, let me just rearrange some of these terms we see that this is del f del y i at these argument values minus 1 by delta x times notice that i have taken minus 1 by delta x out so i see that this is also equal to del f del y i of x i y i delta y i by delta x 
माइनस डेल एफ डेल वाई आई ऑफ एक्स आई माइनस वन वाई आई माइनस वन डेल्टा वाई आई माइनस वन बाय डेल्टा एक्स राइट सो लेट मी जस्ट लेट मी जस्ट टेक दिस कांस्टेंट इन द डिनोमिनेटर एंड दैट शोज द रिजल्ट सिग्निफिकेंटली नोटिस नाउ नोटिस दिस सो लेट मी नाउ टेक टेक द लिमिट डेल्टा एक्स गोज टू जीरो ऑन दिस राइट हैंड साइड राइट सो द राइट हैंड साइड इन्वॉल्व दिस टर्म एज वेल एज दिस होल टर्म एंड वी सी दैट इन द लिमिट डेल्टा एक्स गोज टू जीरो दिस क्वांटिटी इज नथिंग बट द पार्शल एफ पार्शल वाई एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वांटिटी इज नथिंग बट नेगेटिव ऑफ द ऑर्डनरी डेरिवेटिव विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स ऑफ पार्शल वेल दिस इज नथिंग बट वेल देर इज there is a slight error here so we have that this is del del f del y prime right so we are differentiating with respect to the third argument here so this is del f del y prime del f del y prime and del f del y prime since we are differentiating with respect to the third argument which is y prime right so then in the limit this becomes the regular derivative with respect to x of the partial f partial y prime right and on the left hand side this is already set equal to 0 and we see that this is nothing but the euler lagrange equation right so what i have shown here is in the limit in the limit the euler's finite difference method gives a solution which approaches the solution of the euler lagrange method okay 